It is a cracking morning. Hold on, I'm going to get hit by a car. Thanks, mate. So one of the great things about uh, the Melbourne skyline in the morning is seeing the, when there's no wind, is seeing the balloons in the, uh, above the city. Hot air balloons. It was concealed inside the box of frame. It's clear that uh, we believe there was technological fraud, there was a concealed motor, and there was no secrets about that. Um, but uh, other than that, uh, how that happened, what the circumstances were, uh, that will all be passed to the disciplinary commission. My thoughts on that 19 year old girl that got caught motor doping. Basically, I don't know why people call it motor doping because whether it's doping or any sort of doping, it's cheating. So they just call it cheating. So that girl that got caught cheating. You know, no 19 year old girl suddenly wakes up and goes, you know what, I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put a motor in my bike. Like it's, young people don't think about stuff like that. That is influence from a peer, uh, a coach, you know, a mechanic or whatever. So there's a number of people obviously involved in this. Should the 19 year old be vindicated? Not really, I mean, I think she should have a little kick in the ass to teach her a lesson because she's only young. But at the end of the day, I think the people responsible, the people that talked her into it, the people that convinced her it was a good idea and, and made her put that, that and put the, the motor in her frame, those are the people who should be banned for life because they are scumbags. Catch up with Pat Shaw from Avanti uh, ISO Way Racing Team and ask him how his tour down underwent and just a general catch up, see what he's got planned. How you going, man? Thank How's you. things? See ya. Thanks yeah. for making the uh, time to see us. Yeah, no worries, mate. You've been training today? Yeah, I went out for a ride this morning and um, did a couple of activations to just after TDU, then had a week of basically shut down. So yeah. Kidal Evans ended up pretty hard race um, yeah. physically, but also a little bit mentally. Yeah. After having a light week and then obviously a really intense four hour, bit over four hour race. Yeah. So today, yeah, just some activations um, just to get the body ready for tomorrow night's prologue. So for beginners, what are activations? Well, it can be different sorts of stuff, but it's generally a little bit um, higher power than what you generally train at. So just yeah. below threshold today, I did um, three five minute efforts at yeah. low cadence. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that, well, it seemed to have a good result. By the time <laughs> I got back, I felt a lot better. So what a low cadence, 60 RPM, 80? Yeah, between 60 and 70. That's yeah. low enough okay. um, for that type of thing. Yeah. It's not strength endurance stuff, so yeah. um, 60 to 70 cadence. Yeah, right. Mm, great response to your masterclass. Yeah, it's been, I really appreciate that people watched it for a start, but also I did try and comment to everyone that um, also commented. Yeah. If I haven't commented to you, it's not because I've shunned you. It's been a busy period, I'm sure you can understand, but yeah. um, the response was unreal. And I'm, I'm just glad that um, people found the material that I had to offer was beneficial. Yeah. Uh, so that was the exciting thing, and I yeah. think um, it did go over expectations. Um, yeah, yeah. It's had a few hits, so. I think it's my most popular video. Well, that's good, isn't it? <laughs> so, uh, we, well, we've, we've been talking, haven't we, about what we'll do next. Yeah. But we want to be pretty special, so yeah. stay posted. Yeah, stay, stay <laughs> tuned, yeah. So, mate, quick, quick rundown. I thought we'd just get a quick rundown on the tour and what you thought of it and what's next. Yeah, so obviously just uh, had nationals, then went to TDU. Yeah. Um, it was always going to be a bit of an eye-opening experience at that level. Yeah. Um, opened up with the People's Classic. Yeah. Uh, I was ended up 10th there, so um, awesome. that was awesome result, but uh, the, the sheer speed of the finish, I think we hit 77 or 78 k's an hour in the really? sprint finish. It was just, um, yeah, it was just awesome. Um, and the overhead footage really gave a good view yeah. of how quick that, uh, 
the sprint finish, even the riders who were leading the sprint pulled us up to the line. So um, that was a good start, and they sort of got the confidence and the nerves settled a bit. Uh, yeah. Then had rest day, obviously. Um, then went into the tour. The first stage, our obvious plan was to be aggressive and get a jersey, and we accomplished that uh, with Sean Lake. Um, and then, for me personally, it was to help Steele von Hoff and Anthony Giacobo for the sprint. Um, it went pretty good. The sprint was very technical, so the guys sort of got a bit ch chopped off their line, but I think Steele finished eighth uh, on that stage, and with Sean Lake taking the KOM jersey, it was a good day out. Mm. Um, and then Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, should I say, that was uh, Sterling. That was the stage that I sort of hoped that I could maybe do something good in. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, 19th was the best I could I could do. Um, just so hard that race, like circuit race, which makes it difficult. But also, uh, obviously, the quality that's in the tour down under. Um, I, I remember looking down at my head unit. I think, you know, I'm finished, this is it, I'm 100% at my max. And then look down, still 8K, still a finish. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it puts it into a good perspective for people like, watching at home that um, there's a lot of times you're ready to pull the pin, but I just hung in there. Um, yeah. And so then to feel that way 8K out and then finish 19th, I suppose, was pretty good. And I yeah, just excellent. missed that Garen's crash. Uh, yeah. um, but I really enjoyed that stage. Um, and huge respect for Jay McCarthy who won the stage because to be in it and feel how hard it was and he was the victor of that stage just shows, it gives you a better understanding of just how supreme an athlete he is. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was, that was great. Uh, then the day after that was the corkscrew day. That's yeah. the yeah doom, I'll call it doom or gloom. Um, going down corkscrew, just a whole new experience. Even uh, you know, for the people that watch my masterclass and really spoke about the experience that I brought to that, yeah, it was something that was even shocking to me. Um, yeah. and really, it didn't sit well with me the risk that was required to be taken to stay in the group down there. Really? I suppose that's the level of World Tour guys. I don't think a lot of them really enjoy that experience. Yeah. Um, it was definitely something that I was warned about and we we're all warned about, about um, the dangerousness of that descent and the sheer ferocity of the desire of athletes to get to the bottom of that hill in good position makes that really dangerous. So we're hitting speeds over triple figures going down there and jammed together 130, 40, 50 riders. It's very um, dangerous, but um, survived it. So it was great. Um, and another experience to add to the uh, diary for future to tell other people about and, and just help them develop with those, um, the information that I can get out of that, yeah. that experience, because it was something else. Then came the stage to Victor Harbour and that was always one that I'd sort of looked at as a potentially the only day of the tour down under the break could survive. So that's why I wanted to go on the breakaway. But the first hour just in the group, because I reckon one the sprints for intermediate time bonuses, I had averaged nearly 300 watts, 310 watts I think it was for the first hour. Yeah. Um, which is an extreme amount. And then once we got over that it was about the hour and two minute mark that the, the attack started to come. Yeah. So then had to then follow those after doing that. So yeah. um, I was lucky enough to get myself in that move. Yeah. I must admit, it was I just got there because I knew the move to follow, but the wattage was like 550 plus for over a minute to try and just get in that break. And yeah. Really, like I was even thinking when I was getting on there, Oh, I'm going really too deep here to get in this. How am I going to even work once I get here? Yeah. But the fitness showed that it was there for that. And um, yeah, so got in that break. We went out to five and a half minutes pretty quick, but I knew that the bunch would want to bring us back to three minutes and keep us close for that next intermediate sprint. Yep. Um, so about 20 k's from the intermediate sprint, we decided in the breakaway to really up the pace so that we'd survive past that sprint. Yep. And we sort of hoped that if we survive past that sprint, maybe the group would say, okay, we haven't got the intermediate, we'll let the time bonuses go for the finish now and maybe we survive and win the day. Yeah. It didn't go that way, obviously, we all know that now. Yep. Um, but it just shows that when you go in a breakaway, you should have a plan and have a tactic. Yep. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But at least you've got some state of mind of what you're doing. Yep. Um, when I was caught, it was about the three hour mark. 
298 watts on average for three hours. Yep. Um, so it's fair to say, once we were caught, straight out the back. Yeah. Obviously, Wollonga was the next stage. Yep. Uh, we wanted to protect Chris's overall GC. He was top uh, 30 at that point, but we knew if he did a good Wollonga, yep. he'd be top 15 or top 10. Yep. So uh, my job was to take him through the bunch all day until we hit Wollonga yep. um, and protect him, feed him, keep him sheltered, also remind him small gears, all that sort of stuff, the annoying yep. things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, and then, so I did that for the entirety of the stage until we hit Wollonga. And then we passed the reins over to the other guys. So Steel von Hoff positioned them going yeah. into the Wollonga. Yeah. And then uh, Anthony Giacopo protected them on the circuits. And then the last time up the ascent of Wollonga was up to those young guys. And yeah. 19 and 20, Lucas and um, Chris just showed how good they really are. Well, this is Lucas Hamilton. I'm not sure where the we camera's picked him up. spoke about him just before. Well, we'll see where he's, he's off the front. He's jumped away. He's off we the front. He's Dave the man Sanders. that's been tipped. You, you were right, Robbie. Right again. Dave Sanders said this boy is super. We saw him yesterday so good over Kirby Hill. And he is completely Whoa. not intimidated hey, by the Robbie, World Tour. What a result it would be for UniSA. Oh, wait, for a young guy, 19 years old, not even been overseas yet, Phil, oh. except with the juniors. And he is taking on the World Tour and riding away from them. Yeah. But overall, the week, there's only two teams at one stage, so yeah, we know right. we didn't win a stage, but we're really proud of what we did. Yeah. Um, and I think we also represented, because the five guys from the team were from Avani Ice Away, I think we really represented our Absolutely. continental team brilliantly as well. Yeah. Um, and that's prepared us well coming into the Herald Sun Tour. Prologue's really technical. It's going to be about setting up GC initially yeah. um, and who the team will be to ride the first days. So it's an important day for all GC riders not to lose more than probably six or seven seconds. Yeah. Then it's going to be a tough grinding tour. It's all really going to come down to whether does Chris Froome want to win? Yeah. And if he wants to win, well then it's probably going to be pretty clear cut yeah. as to how it runs. But if Chris is happy for a teammate to, to maybe do well on the tour instead of him, yeah. then maybe the race will be raced a bit differently. Yeah. Uh, I'm hoping for an aggressive race. I think when it's aggressive and gets messy, it gives our team a really good opportunity. We have so many uh, strings on our guitar. Yeah. Um, and I think all our guys are probably capable of doing a good GC result in the right conditions. So. Yeah. Um, um, still got to get to Sunday. It's going to be hot on Sunday up uh, Arthur's seat. Yeah. It's going to be a tough day, but that's where it'll be won and lost. Yeah, a lot of people will be there, mate. We'll be there. Oh, the crowd's you, always awesome there. And the people are vocal. Yeah. Um, that's a good crowd. You want a crowd that wants to yell, a crowd yeah. that wants to cheer. And look, our support that we've had, I know personally from Pat Lane and I, it's just been fantastic over the past month. And yeah. we've really enjoyed it. So yeah. if you're getting out there, we do hear you <laughs> and we do appreciate it. Good stuff, man. Finally. What do you think of this uh, motor doping scandal? Yeah, um, I think there's two sides to it. I'm really disappointed for the young girl. I think she's 19 years of age, and I think that she probably most definitely hasn't done that on her own accord. Yeah. And I think respect for her in this sort of time is probably very important. Let's remember that she's got to go on and live a life after this, or hopefully continues in cycling, because she's obviously very talented anyway. Yeah. Um, it's just a very sad thing because I think it's probably the, the parents are influenced or coaches or other people have influenced this type of behaviour. Yeah. I think that's very sad. Yeah. I think that's a very sad side of it because yeah. generally speaking, kids don't come up with this stuff and 19's not a kid but still young enough to be influenced by people she trusts. Uh, you're dead right. I totally agree with you, mate. Mm. Yep, yeah. spot on. Pat, thank you so much again for your time, brother. Thanks we, very much. We uh, wish you all the, luck, all the best of luck uh, tomorrow. Yep. And for the rest of the week, sweet as.